even further. That's why right It's a carnival atmosphere here on Derby Day in Flemington. A lot of very happy, smiling people. I think that could be because a few of them have been in the money, I think. There's a lot of money around today and uh, a lot of people winning great big handfuls of bowling stuff. So they could be lashing out and buying some champers and sitting on the lawn and having a sip. Oh, dear. <laughs> Flemington on Derby Day. Peter Donigan, I think you probably should take it away. Yes, OK then, Tim. I will. <laughs> And uh, these runners are in the mounting yard for the seventh event, the Challenger Stakes, at uh, five minutes after four. That's the scheduled starting time. Great sprinters here. Always uh, a wonderful race to look at, charging down the 1,200 metres. And this little horse, Poetic King, he's only pint size, but he had uh, a life-threatening operation. He was two weeks away from dying, and then he came out and he won at Mooney Valley, and he ran a terrific third to quality goal. He's got a heart as big as himself, Jen. Oh, yes, and he's also fitted for two runs, too, Pete. Stepping up to the 1,200 metres, it does look like it's going to suit him. He goes extremely well down the straight. Good chance. Racer's Edge is another one that goes well down the straight. In fact, won the Rupert Steel in its last start here on the last stride and reminding you there is a riding change here w harris rides the gauchy engine in the first race on the card yes well this horse he's got a terrific record at the down the straight of flemington this horse i really do think he'll go well here wayne harris on board he'll help him too um, he's pretty fit there's no fitness problems with him definite chance in the race Ruslan number four ran fourth in this race last year i saw him at the track here the other morning gee he looks well yes um i thought he probably may have needed that run first up when he ran third it was a good effort there and uh, he's, uh, he's probably too good to leave out if you're taking trifectas in his race. We uh, spoke about horses Jen that love the straight and cut up rough as certainly amongst them. Uh, he went up to 1400 metres in the Vic Health and was nosed out by our maze case. Not seated at the 1600 of the two rack back to his pet distance here. Well he was very wide in the two rack too Pete so that might have been an excuse but back to this distance it really does suit him. Six starts the four wins down the straight. Terrific, terrific chance in it. Cliff to Beers number six with Mick Dippin aboard, chased home Moss Rocket in that blistering run at Caulfield and then finished well back behind quality goal. Well he did, he's, he's quite a nice handy horse, Cliff to Beers. Um, his very best form has been over 1,400 metres in the past. Back to 1,200 here, you've still probably got to leave him there with a chance because he has got some pass about him. Darren Beekman's had a couple of winners today, number 14, Sword, is his mount here, trained by Jack Denham, and his sprinting form in Sydney is pretty good, including a win over Moss, or a second behind Moss Rocket, I should say, beating the length and a quarter in the short. Nicely in here with 52 kilograms. Uh, he's a horse that likes to race up on the paces. He's going to give a nice sight for quite some way. Very consistent animal too. So, good Just awesome, number 15, flashed home at its last start at Caulfield. It was nearly last around the turn. Flew home to finish second behind for Peter Moore. Absolutely. Um, it was a good effort there. Uh, no, no luck two starts ago uh, at Caulfield, so I'd forgive him for that. I think he's probably left here with a trifecta chance, Peter. I don't know if he can win this. And the last one thrown by Grant Steel, quality goal. Gee, he was some sort of run in the Moira and Mooney Valley, Jen. A terrific type, this horse. Quality gold. I really do like him. Uh, he's only a three-year-old, so he's taking on the older horses. Only 51 and a half here. Uh, a pretty good chance in the race. You can't roll him out. What did you like? Well, I'm going for number five, Cut Up Rough. I think he can win from the three-year-old, number 16, Quality Gold. And for third, I'll put in the top weight, number one, Poetic King. Poetic King for me from Cut Up Rough. Ruslan, a chance there. Poetic King going up to the stalls. We'll be back to Flemington shortly for race seven, the Ballinger Stakes. following sponsors hope you're enjoying today's telecast of the 1995 Melbourne Cup Carnival. Fosters, it doesn't get any better than this. Optus Communications, we're just here to help you communicate better. Qantas, now celebrating its 75th anniversary. Radiant XL, the only 100% active laundry concentrate. Challenger Stakes and runners at the top of the famed Flemington Straight. It used to be called the Straight Six, now that's straight 1,200 metres. Quality gold, that horse absolutely flashing home at the end of the Moyer last week, and that's what's in front of them. That long way down the straight in front of a big crowd, probably around about the 50,000 mark, as we check the tote call now, and here's Dan. 
Everything speed wide open affair. Poetic King is just favourite, seven dollars thirty. Races edge at seven ninety has gone for vast on course. Roosland eight eighty. Cut up rough seven fifty. Chiefs the beers at eight dollars thirty. So there's a host of chances all around that seven and eight dollar uh, mark. Outside is Brawny Spirit, Tenor and Drawn Bay. Raleen, half brother to Brackenbury, 23.60. Social Rule 22. Centile at $40. She races okay down the straight. Don Pasquale, 27. Sword at $8.30. Just awesome at $16.40. And Quality Gold at $7.80. And they're filling the gates pretty well. They're the uh, main ones that are in the betting from about 6 to 1 to 8 to 1. Uh, to check out the scene with the, the bag man, here is uh, Terry Kennedy. Plenty of money down in the ring to say Poetic King, the top weight here, can get the money. No money at all for Razor's Edge. It has taken a massive bath in the betting. Just takes one of the first out, Brawny Spirit from down near the inside. Don Pasquale jumps away well today. Razor's Edge and sort of handy with Roos Land. And they're all coming down this flat side of the track. Ten is the widest runner for the moment, but he's probably a bit worse than midfield. And Grand Bay is up in about fourth placing. Down towards the 900 metres point, and the race's edge, Brawny Spirit, soared all up towards the lead. Wider out on the track was Grand Bay. Don Pasquale just behind that leading division. Chiefs of Ears is about seven from Cut Up Rough. Then came Quality Gold, centre out very wide. Then Centile, Raleen, Kingston Bay back along the inside towards the tail of the field with Social Rule and Just Awesome. Running onto the course proper, 5.50 metres to go. Race's edge in front of Brawny Spirit, who's now about eight away from the rail and wanting to drift away from the track. Grand Bay just behind those with Sword Chiefs of Beers. Roosland back to the inside. It's Race's edge, Brawny Spirit, Sword inside them. Grand Bay cut up rough, running on Quality Gold, Chiefs of Beers. Roosland, Race's edge in front. Off back on the inside, coming at a Sword. Brawny Spirit, Grand Bay down the outside. Sword getting through on the inside. Sword and Brawny Spirit, Brawny Spirit and Sword. Brawny Spirit doing better, Brawny. Beaten sword and races there, Grand Bay fourth. Then came Kingston Bay and Ruthland. Poetic King next and then cut up rough and Raleen. Followed by Sentile and Chief Severe. Social rule, Don Pasquale, Quantity Gold. And Tennis back at the tail of the field. Well, what a great ride, Dan. If we get a head on shot of this, it'll be uh, from the 400 metres that horse wanted to shift out. Michael Clark had to keep nursing him, bringing him back, getting him back. And then the last little bit he was able to find the strength to get him back up and right on the line. Approximately $34 even and $8.50 for Brawny Spirit, $3 even for Sword and $2.90 for Racer's Edge. He drew barrier one, Gary Brawny Spirit, and he has got a tendency to do that. They put the, uh, the uh, blinkers on him last start and it didn't seem to work and they've uh, reverted with the blinkers off today. And he's got the prize, there's no doubt about it. Number seven, Brawny Spirit has no doubt Sword and uh, number three, Racer's Edge, who probably looked the winner at the 400 metre point, yeah. just couldn't quite go on, but has been oh. able to hang on to third. Was Seven, it was and three. Here we are, we have him married here. Born his third, he's racing about six or seven off the uh, fence here, and as you roll her on, you'll just see he starts to want to shift out a couple of times with Michael. You have to stop riding him, bring him back in. Just going to shift a little bit here, he's doing one with the stick here. Just shift a bit. The one on the pink with the blinkers on his uh, sword, the razor's edge uh, outside of him. It's a great effort, he's only pony sized his horse, and he's given his all. He's just wanting to shift out again here, straighten him up, put the whip away, ride him hands and heels. He'll go from again just on the line to get him up. There he goes. Razor's edge ducked in under pressure there, made yeah. contact with his sword, but... Um, oh, great effort there. He did fight back, didn't he, Brawny Spirit? Yep. He's the sort of horse that they're always catching him, and he hung on, but today he really had to lift again in the last hundred, because without a doubt, he was headed. Uh, undoubtedly, he was headed by Sword and uh, Racer's Edge. And I know Michael Clark would be absolutely thrilled to bounce back into the Group 1 winner's list. Uh, good on you, Mick. Mick Clark, he's uh, talking with Johnny Less. I can't catch up to him yet. He's a little bit faster than me, Brawny Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him in a minute, fellas. Right. Here's another good hit on. Okay. So, uh, um, Banjo's been uh, put into near yeah. enough to a gallop. Put under a bit of pressure, I can tell you, Banjo is. <laughs> you haven't got the stick on you, what we see, Lefty. <laughs> I said to Banjo, let Brawny Spirit lead you. <laughs> he said, we'll do that. He said, I'll grab him the last 100 metres. <laughs> Good luck to you, mate. 7, 14 and 3, fourth in number 9, Grand Bay, which was an excellent run. Now, a lot of people were doubting his ability to run 1,200, so in Group 1 company, that's a terrific performance. Yes. And uh, number four, Roosland, has uh, wound up in, in fifth placing. But a Group 1 victory to Brawny Spirit. He was an Ascot Vale Stakes winner as a three-year-old, trained by Mick Wicks at Flemington. He's only a pony, 
and uh, oh, what a tremendous thrill for for, for Mick and the, the gang that uh, own this horse, Brawny Spirit. Pete, remember the day he won his first race? It was about 250 to 1. Yeah, and he's only pint size, but he's got a tremendous heart, and Mick Winks is down here now, and uh, we'll have a chat to Mick. He doesn't know when he's beaten that horse. A couple of little cuts, no, he? Yeah. He must have been headed three times. Yes, And he yeah. just keeps on coming back. Well, Michael, give him a couple around the tail there at the, the 400, I think, and I think he's putting on the job then. Well, he's too quick for Johnny Letts. He just got away from him out there. Oh. Letts, he was trying to catch him. Oh. Well, he's got no hope of catching him around the back there. <laughs> he tried to take off with me this morning. Really? I've got a bit of laryngitis, I'm sorry. Mm. Oh, you've probably got a bit more after that. Oh, I'll let him fix it up in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea, yeah. A bit of liquid refreshment. Uh, Mick, oh, he's just a terrific horse. So despite his habit of running out a bit, yeah. um, he's got such a huge heart. Oh, well, he's racing against all the best horses, too, and he's only a little time, you know. At 52 and a half, and he's back today, I thought, great. What now? That's a lot of he's carried for a long time. Yeah. Oh, well, he's in a little lift go, but he, I don't think he'll run. We might look after him for the autumn now. Go and see if you can get rid of that laryngitis, Mick. Oh, uh, all right. Thank you very much, Pete. Yeah, good idea, mate. Right. Good. Mick Winks, the winning trainer. And he is a courageous little racehorse, that fellow. Brawny Spirit, the winner of the Salinger Stakes. Second place in going to number 14, Sword. And third was number three, Racer's Edge. Back to Flemington shortly with correct weight and all the dividends on race seven. closing stages of Derby Day for 1995 and a great day it's been and as usual quality of the racing has been absolutely outstanding. Winner of the Salinger, Brawny Spirit, sensational little run that was. Alright we await presentations, we also uh, await correct weight too from Mr Lawler. We'll make sure we've got that, we'll get Danny to pay you some money and then we'll go back to members for the presentations. And I think Mr. Lawler is going to identify to us that he's pretty happy. Great white, thank you. There it is, and thank you, Mr. Lawler. Okay, Danny Malecki, dividends, please. Some pretty big dividends all up too, Tim. Brawny Spirit, $34.60 for the win and $8.50 for the place. Second Sword, $2.90, and third Race's Edge, $2.90. Quinella, $135.90. Exacta $372.50, the Trifecta $3188.50, Race to Race Double $109.70 on a pair of sevens, the Daily Double $142.40 on three and seven, and the Quadrella $1666.40, numbers were five, three, double seven. Good thing I've heard divvies indeed, and that is for sure, if you're on Brawny Spirit, all the best here. They're right for the presentations in front of the members, here's Richard Zachariah. The Salinger Stakes keeps alive the great dream in Australian racing that everybody can own and train a Group 1 winner. And uh, Mick Winks, the trainer today, and the owners, congratulations to them for great effort. The Salinger Stakes, of course, is sponsored by South Corp Wines. And before calling Mr Neil Grant, their, manager, their general manager, can I introduce to you the VRC committee man, Mr Andrew Ramsden, who is hosting this race. Andrew, thank you. Mr. Neil Grant, the General Manager of South Core Wines in Victoria and in Tasmania. Thank you very much, Richard. Ladies and gentlemen, may I first thank the BRC for making it possible for Seppel Challenger to be part of the best days racing in Australia. 
sippled through its sparkling wine wine brands has enjoyed a lot of long association with the victorian racing club and on course all year round we can celebrate with sippled sparkling wines salinger a sparkling wine pr created at the home of sippled in victoria is very proud to sponsor today's race the premier sprint race of the carnival the sippled sparkling wine portfolio is australia's most loved from Great Western to Salinger, Australia's premier method champenois wine, like today's winner, has seen success. Uh, uh, it was a great run from Brawny Spirit. And uh, Salinger has been awarded Sparkling Wine of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd now very much like to congratulate a very excited Mick, w Mick Wink and also uh, Michael Clark on a great, great ride, but most of all, Brawny Spirit on a most deserved win. I now take very great pleasure in inviting Mrs. Terry Toy to accept the 1995 trophy. Thank you very much. Yes, and thank you. Yes, we tend to forget the horses sometimes. There's so many uh, important people around during Melbourne Cup week, we forget them. Of course, that's what we're here for. And uh, a good win from Brawny Spirit there. Well, one more race to go on the program today. The Crown Quality and Peter Donegan, yet again, another pointer to Tuesday's big race. Yes, it is, and one more pointer we can give you, Tim, unfortunately, is one that we'd prefer not to give you, and that is news about Pratara's Bay, which ran second in the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes. Unfortunately, he bled during that race, and he will not start in the Melbourne Cup, so that's bad news for Gay. It's a real shame, Pete, because Pratara's Bay had been going so very well leading up to the Melbourne Cup, um, an absolute shame for connection there. Highs and lows are racing, you know, you're in the derby, and all of a sudden you lose a cup horse. Oh, absolutely, um, yeah, devastating for the owners. Well... Well, there's Dermot Weld, the man who'll be guiding Vintage Crop into his third Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. Can he win his second? Find out then. Wonder if the luck of the Irish will be with him this year. As Dermot Weld walks off the track, we'll go away from Flemington for a moment and be back shortly.